Welcome to Flourishment, the podcast on living life as you were meant to, so you can flourish. Welcome, everyone. I'm so happy to have with me Annette Reeder, who is brilliant, educated. She has a degree in nutrition, and she's known as the Biblical Nutritionist. Welcome, Annette. Thanks, Tina. I've been looking forward to this for so long, so I'm glad we got to put this together. Me too. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say about the keys to sustainable weight loss. Tell us a little bit about what we need to know to keep that weight off and how it isn't, like you said, what's on our plate. Yeah. So many people, they're always about, well, let me eat this and don't eat that. And that's where they focus. And yet that's not what's going to make the long-term difference. So I've traveled this road my entire life. And then I, someone challenged me. They said, Annette, you just really need to get back in God's word. And I was really taken aback by what they said. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm a Christian. I know, I know what the Bible says. And they're like, no, you're not looking at it for your health. And so I, I was ready to prove her wrong. At the same time, I was trying to prove the doctors wrong about my husband because they kept writing prescriptions as if they had a notepad to give us. And it's like, okay, we are in a crisis. Well, through really going back into God's word and understanding three words, the words are eat, pray, and fast. Understanding that those are three of the most misunderstood words in the Christian's life, learning how to apply scripture to my life. Within the first month, my husband and I together lost 35 pounds just in the first month. Um, And then I started looking into this more and I'm like, I think there's something to this because I've been on every diet that's out there, every pill, every program, every fad, you know, whatever you need to eliminate, I've eliminated it. Whatever you need to eat more of, I've ate more of it. So, you know, I've been through all of those. And then my journey was a 60 pound weight loss. And I realized it had nothing to do with what was on my plate. It had everything to do with what I believed. And that is what has changed what I did to now what I teach. So that's kind of a brief intro to why I am where I am and how God brought me here. Well, 35 pounds of weight loss in a single month without a fad diet and without gaining it back is definitely enough to change your mindset and your soul set. So let's talk about some specific steps that people can take in order to get where you needed to go when you were in that place of needing to be healthier. Well, we have to look at what we believe and what we understand. So the food battle is not a food battle. It's a spiritual battle. And once we identify that and agree with it, then change can actually happen. And I don't mean just short-term change. I'm talking about long-term change. And it takes these three disciplines, the discipline of eating, the discipline of praying, fasting. And those three disciplines are what's going to make the difference in long-term versus short-term change in our life. And many people have lost weight and kept it off, but many of them also still struggle with the mindset. And yet we as Christ have been called to be set free. And this is the three disciplines that help set us free. And so when you look at people in general, America and even those around the world, because I'm sure you have many international listeners to this program, we struggle with the three Ds, which is diabetes, depression, and dementia. Three words we don't want to have, yet three words we're struggling with the most. And all of those are going to come back to how knowing when and how to eat, knowing when and how to pray, and knowing when and how to fast. And all three of those are anchored in what do you truly believe about God's word? So how does God's word speak to us about when to eat? I know it speaks to us about how to pray and when to fast, but how does it talk to us about what to eat? Well, realize most people eat without even being hungry. It's a situation we're in, it's an aroma, you know, when we were walking through the malls and you caught that Cinnabon smell, it's like, oh, I think I'm hungry. Well, actually you're not, you just 
want that. You know, we've been taught to eat for many reasons, except for the reason of true hunger. And yet hunger is more spiritual than it is physical. And so what I teach in all my videos, you'll hear me say this over and over and over again, is just as we are physical, we are spiritual. And just as we are spiritual, we are physical. So recognizing hunger is how God speaks to us. We were created to crave, yet we need to learn how to identify the craving. Is it truly a food craving or is it a, hey, God's looking for your attention? Are we eating because we have a stomach that's growling and saying, hey, it's been 12 hours, you know, since you ate last night and we're kind of needing some nutrition? Or are you eating because there's a stress in your life or there's a relationship issue or there's a job loss or a shutdown? You know, we have to identify the hunger. Is it a hunger just for God's word? Is it a hunger for him to speak to you? And do we stuff that hunger with food? That's what I mean. Like more people eat because they're hungry for God than hungry for food. And they just don't know how to recognize the difference. Now, as a mental health professional, I'm familiar with people doing emotional eating and our emotions are connected with the things that we need healing from in our spiritual relationship with God. So that does make a lot of sense. You know, there's at uh, Lisa Turkhurst wrote a great book on made to crave New York times bestseller because people have cravings. You know, we have physical cravings, we have spiritual cravings, and we have em emotional cravings. We crave to be loved, we crave to be hugged, we crave to be comforted. And yet we don't always know how to facilitate those cravings, how to satisfy those cravings. And that's what God is trying to teach us. He wants to be that satisfying you know, fulfillment in our life. We were created for him to be that satisfying fulfillment in our life. Yet, you know, when I was growing up as a child, I was not taught this. So I went to food for everything. You know, I was, I had good parents. They didn't have hundred percent great parenting skills. And so where, whatever they lacked, I went to food, <laughs> you know? And, and so many people are in the same situation. We use food as reward. We use food as comfort. We use food as, as love. And God's like, no, I, I'm that for you. I created you with a longing for me, but we haven't taught our children how to recognize that longing and how to satisfy it. And that's why this has nothing to do with what's on your plate. This has everything to do with your relationship with food and your relationship with God. And which one do you want to encourage? Does that make sense? Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense, especially since we think about how God wants us to always be at the table with him. And whether we are eating or we are praying, all of those things are including God in meeting our needs. And when we're looking at the way that we eat, as a means of connecting with God in covenant, like they used to do in the Old Testament times, every time you ate, it was building covenant. And when we invite God to the table, when we eat, we can better discern whether we're eating to nourish our bodies, to bless our bodies so they can function for God's will and his glory better, or whether we're really seeking to satisfy something that is met better through our spiritual relationship with God. Yeah, I, I so agree. So in all of our programs, we teach the three things, how to eat, how to pray, and how to fast. Of the three, yes, eating is the most misunderstood, but yet fasting is the most foreign to everyone. You know, we, I would, I've been in church almost my entire life. I mean, if my mom hadn't quickly got up out of the church, off the church pew to the hospital, I would have been born in the church. I mean, it's just, that's how much I've been in church. And yet fasting was reserved for Old Testament, or it was maybe a few extremists out there. I was never taught to fast. And yet that is one of the key elements in a Christian's life to develop that discipline. And when we learn how to fast and we learn why to fast, we start to recognize hunger and the difference between physical and spiritual hunger and satisfied and how to recognize, okay, I've eaten enough food to satisfy my needs 
If I eat any more, then I'm going beyond what my body needs and requires. And I need to learn now, okay, now I need to focus on what else God has to help satisfy my needs. I have an interesting story. We were on a cruise with another couple and he's a pastor at a church here in Virginia. And we were at the, you know, if you've been on a cruise, food is everywhere. I mean, you can have as much as you want. Well, we were seated at the dinner table in the evening and, you know, you can just look at the menu and I didn't realize this, but you can order every single thing on the menu. Now I was looking at like, okay, you get one appetizer, one salad, and even four, you know, options is a lot. But he's like, no, I'll take this entree and this entree and this entree. And I looked at him like, and he's not overweight at all. He's perfectly slim. I'm like, how do you do that? He says, well, I want to taste all of them. And so our table, when the waiters brought all the food, it was embarrassing. I'm like, um, people are looking at us. We have more food than we have people here. And so he had eaten some bites off of each plate. And he says, okay, I'm done. I'm satisfied. And if I take one more bite, I will be sinning. Okay. He totally caught me off guard with that comment. And I said, explain yourself. He says, once I've reached the point of satisfied, I know I've met my nutritional needs. Eating beyond that is eating for emotional needs or other needs that cannot be satisfied with food. So to keep eating food, when God has a different desire to fulfill those other hungers is a sin because God's like, I've got this. Just trust me on this. And so that was a huge teaching moment for me to see someone actually work it out and understand, okay, there's a hunger put inside each one of us. There's a a physical need that we have, but even greater than our physical need is our spiritual need. And learning to differentiate the two is really important for each Christian to understand. That's very interesting to describe that as having that balance between just meeting the need that we have without trying to meet a need in the wrong way, something that we we can't meet with food and just satisfy a boredom or seeking to be entertained by the taste of the food or even more deeply dissatisfying would be trying to meet an emotional need because once you do that, then you have that guilt later in that negative consequence of, I feel terrible because I've eaten too much physically after that. And then that has the opposite effect of what you wanted. Instead of being healing, it's damaging to you emotionally later on. And and the problem too, is not everyone recognizes the guilt at first. You know, many of them just have been taught to eat this. And especially when we're in troubled times, Food becomes the cheap pacifier, basically. And and until we recognize the difference between hunger and satisfied, people just eat. Oh, let's have this. Let's have that. I was talking with one friend of mine and his wife was an overeater. And so to please his wife, they would have binging episodes. And and when he told me this, I'm like, seriously, You, you, you did? He says, well, that's what made her happy. So I would join her in on it. And so needless to say, he, his weight exploded. He, he grew very large and I was helping him to get all that weight off. And so we, we have a real misunderstanding between hunger and satisfied and what God wants to do in our life and recognizing the difference. But what I was started to say was a lot of people don't understand where that line is and how to recognize it. So that's what, that's what I teach. I teach you how to recognize satisfied. Can you give us one tip on how to recognize being satisfied when people don't really get used to knowing what that feels like? It's kind of a process because we have much to unlearn as we have to learn. And so we have to start learning to tune into how our body works, how our body processes food. And so what I recommend at first is The first day you truly want to understand this is just for one day, eat half of your meals throughout the day. So for one day, eat half the normal food that you eat. Okay. Whatever that amount is, because we have to start learning how to recognize the cues that our body gives us. And those are related to hormones and they're related to several other factors that God instilled in us. Yet when we've been overeating for so long, they've been... They've been silenced basically. 
So we have to find ways to turn them back on. And then I have to teach you how to recognize them. So one friend of mine, she does it with her clients is just go as long as you can fast as long as you can without eating until you really, truly feel growling hunger, then only eat half a meal and see how long you can go. It's, in other words, you have to retrain yourself because with the hormones, ghrelin and leptin and all of this, we have silenced our hormones and teaching us how to obey this, how to learn it and how to apply it. So we have to retrain our brain and we have to retrain our hormones to work for us. It's not an instant. Well, God could do it instantly, um, you know, and just speaking with him and just pouring your heart out to him and saying, Lord, I want to understand my body and how you created it. And I want to satisfy it with food only to the amount that it needs. And many people are surprised we don't really need 3000 calories a day. And it's not that we need the 2000 that the government says, but your body may only need 1500 calories a day to be very healthy. It's just, we've been brainwashed into thinking, okay, 2000 is, is good, but we normally eat three to 4,000 and we feel miserable. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question. It, you have to, it's like when you first come to Christ as a Christian, you don't know it all. You're going to learn it as you experience him. And the same is true with understanding satisfied, satisfied at the table. We start with eating just half a meal and then walking away. See how you feel. How long does that hold you until your next meal and starting to learn the cues and the less we eat, the quicker those hormones will come back into working for us. And I think the amount of time that we take to eat and to drink water with our food and things like that makes a difference because it takes our brain and our body a little while to recognize that we're satisfied because we're used to eating fast. We're in such a hurry. We're so busy that we don't realize that we're full because it takes probably what, 20 minutes for our body to recognize that you have met the need for calories. If you eat too quickly, you will have finished your food, but still feel hungry. Yeah. That is a theory that a lot of people will apply, but there's been times I've sat down and in five minutes, I know I'm satisfied. I know that the taste has changed. You know how it is if you're really extremely starving Food tastes so amazing. It is, the, the flavors are so sharp. It's like, wow, that tastes so good, you know? But yet when you're no longer starving, the food doesn't have that excitability. It's just like, oh, well, I'm going to finish this because it's here, you know? And because our senses are more heightened when we're starved than when we are full. And so learning how to recognize that. And so, yeah, so just learning how to pay attention so we have a couple of tools. I have a hunger satisfied journal, which I was going to share with you. Hey, that's good. It's a new book getting ready to be released um, in two weeks. So I'm excited about that. It's a tool I've been using for years to help people work through this, how to recognize hunger, how to recognize satisfied. And it's just a journal, th different things I have you write down every day. And then how to move that hunger from physical hunger to recognizing the spiritual hunger and what God is trying to teach you through this time period. So one of the key points is to pay attention, pay attention to your spirit, pay attention to the Holy Spirit and pay attention to the cues that God has created in your body. Exactly. Yeah. That's a quick summary. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so any other main points or key tips that you want to leave with the audience about how to create sustainable weight loss not looking at what's on your plate, but looking at what's in your spirit. I do. Um, so I have this puppy who's nine months old and she has been a lot of work. <laughs> She's a little shelty and she is extremely smart. She's smarter than I am. And yet at times she wants to please me. And at other times she's like, no, I have no desire to please you whatsoever. So we're learning a lot of ways to train her and to correct her. And my dog trainer was, keeps telling me, you know, so you have your leash on her and the harness and all that. And so when she does something wrong, do a very quick correction and then do an immediate praise. And this is very key because in the hunger satisfied journal, I mean, I just have some 
pages printed off here. So down here at the bottom, I will have people write, what are the credits that you can give yourself for doing right today? Because what we focus on is what our brain is going to then stay focused on. I don't want people going down the guilt road because when you focus on, oh, I failed again, why start? Then that's all you're gonna do is keep failing. I want you to focus on, you know what? I waited till I was hungry for breakfast. Give yourself credit. And then, you know, sing a praise or do the Snoopy dance, whatever it is, you know, do something to acknowledge that that's what you did right. When we focus on what we did right and what we did honoring to God is like, Lord, look, I waited till, uh, you know, eight o'clock in the morning when I was truly hungry to eat breakfast, give yourself credit. Many times we might wait till eight and we're really hungry and we eat, but then we've eaten beyond satisfied. And so what do we focus on? We focus on, well, I ate beyond satisfied. And then we go down the guilt road. So we've taken away the value of that credit of waiting until you're hungry. When we focus on waiting till you're hungry and give ourselves credit for it, the next time the next meal comes along, our brain is going to be saying, wow, because our brain is a pleasure seeking brain. It's going to focus on what did she focus on after that meal? She focused on waiting until she was hungry. I'm going to help her wait till she is hungry because I want that credit. I want that pleasure. Our brain is focused on pleasure. So at lunch, you wait till you're hungry and then you write it, write it down. I waited till I was hungry to eat lunch or I wasn't hungry for lunch. So I waited till I was hungry to eat and write it down. This is my credit. The more we focus on what we do right and the less on the guilt road the less we're gonna go down the guilt road because our brain will start focusing and rewiring us to do what is right as far as our eating. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love that you're focusing on the positives because I think that's one of the hardest things for people who struggle with weight loss. They focus on food as something that's their reward, that is their pleasure seeking place, that is their comfort. And they put all the positives in the food itself instead of in health, instead of feeling good, instead of energy and focusing on the good benefits of being healthy and eating healthy and allowing God to be part of your relationship with your physical well-being and your health and rejoicing and celebrating and all of that, that is a tremendous benefit and learning to praise God and celebrate with him and all of these good benefits of eating well and exercising well, that's a completely different take. And it's a take that people who stay thin will do, whereas people who go back and forth with yo-yo diets won't be able to do because they're defining themselves by the pleasure of the food's taste, not by the overall benefits of well-being. Exactly. Yes. I love that you've been here with us today, Annette. Can you tell everyone more about what you have to offer so they can stay following you and stay connected with you? I would love to. So our website is thebiblicalnutritionist.com. And when you go there, you can sign up for the seven steps to amazing biblical health. In those seven steps, I'm actually going to give you pretty much almost the material out of my new book as a free download. But I'm also going to walk you through the steps of how to recognize hunger, how to recognize satisfied. And it's all free. (laughs) My marketing department is like, why are you giving this away? I'm like, because they need it. You know, so, um, so it's the seven steps to amazing biblical health. And that is where you can just get started. And so it's at my website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com. From there, people who want to work with me, they will then go into the 40 day transformation and how to start transforming our thoughts, our beliefs, and make sure they are in agreement with God's word. And from there, the next step is they will join our inner circle where I get to help coach them through these thoughts and these circumstances to help them get the results. I mean, today's call this morning was a 40 pound weight loss and a 20 pound weight loss. So we were celebrating those. And another person is just getting started. And she's like, wow, I finally get to give myself credit for doing well. And so these are just those transformations that are happening. And so people, if they just want to learn from me, get to know me, they could go to the YouTube um, channel, the biblical nutritionist.com. And there I'll teach you how to eat. I'll teach you. I'll be at the grocery store every Friday showing you, you want to buy this. You don't want to buy that, you know, and I'll be giving you a lot of firsthand view of how to eat healthy 
and then also challenging you on your beliefs. Just a lot of items on the menu for people who truly want to be healthy. Thanks so much, Annette. I love that you're offering all these wonderful resources and that people can stay connected with you. So I hope that all of you will stay connected with the biblical nutritionist, Annette Reader, and that you will come back for the next episode of Flourishment.